What is up you guys? My name is Aubrey and welcome to my channel. And today we are going to be going over my roughly $7,500 stock portfolio. I'll take you through my portfolio on the two platforms that I use to trade. I'll tell you what my trades are and what my thought process is behind these trades. So let's begin. So before we go into my stocks, I want to make sure to ask you guys if you guys can smash that like button and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this content. It really helps my channel, it helps my channel grow and it makes me super happy to see that I have a new like, a new view, a new comment, or a new subscriber. And so if you haven't done so, make sure to do that. So before I take you into my computer and show you what my stocks are, I want to provide you with a little bit of insight on like what my thought process is with stock investing and kind of where I'm at with things financially. So I have been investing in the stock market for a pretty long time. I started investing when I was 16 and I really done it on and off since then. I'm now 26, so it's been about 10 years. Now, I created a video a couple months ago, and I will link it above, about how I made $100,000 investing in the stock market and investing in the stock, specifically American Airlines, and investing in that one when it was a penny stock going through its bankruptcy, holding it after high school and into my two years of college, and I was able to make $100,000. Well, ever since then, I have not been a consistent investor in the stock market, though I definitely have plans to be. And one of my goals in 2020 was to start investing in the stock market more actively. So I would really consider myself to kind of be an opportunistic investor. I don't really have a specific investing strategy long term. Kind of my plan has always been put money where it makes sense to put it for the largest gains. And so I made 100,000 in the stock market in high school. I then used that money to buy a franchise. I then invested all my money into Turo. And while doing Turo and buying cars, I wanted to get into investing into the stock market, at least putting like a couple hundred dollars every single month. But it was hard to justify doing that because I could spend a few thousand dollars on a car and make 100% ROI on that money in three to four months. And so from an ROI perspective, at least right now, there hasn't been one that is better than Turo. And so that's really prohibited me from going in and investing in the stock market because I could invest that same money into buying a new car and I would make just significantly more return on that investment than I would say in a stock. But with that being said, with everything going on in the economy, I have not been adding more cars to my Turo fleet because the cars aren't really getting rented out that much right now anyways. And I don't wanna put money into an investment that isn't being fully utilized right now in the first place. So the Turo cars are just sitting. I have not added more cars to the fleet, though I do plan to by the end of 2020. So what I've done is instead of putting my money into new cars, I've put that same money into the stock market, resulting in what I now have as a $7,500 stock portfolio. So the first account that I will take you guys into is my TD Ameritrade account. Now, this is the account that I used back whenever I was 16. So I've had this account for like 10 years. I actually opened it whenever it was still Scott Trade, and then they merged with TD Ameritrade at some point over the last like five years or so. And my TD Ameritrade portfolio has $7,412.87. And that is spread across four stocks. The first stock that I have is American Airlines. This is the ticker symbol AAL. And I have 140 shares of AAL at an average price of 10.48 per share. Meaning that my entire position for this stock is $1,619.80. So the reason why I invested in American Airlines is because it is a company that I know extremely well. I have been following American Airlines extremely closely, both on like a corporate side and financially since I was 16 years old. So I know the company extremely, extremely well. And the reason why going into American Airlines is because I think that there is huge upside for that stock in the short term. You know, I bought it at 1048, but for a long time it was hovering in that 25 to $30 range. And I fully believe that the reason why it's at 1048 right now is because of the COVID-19 crisis. I do believe that there will be a lot of travel related stocks that go bankrupt over the next maybe six months to a year, but I don't think that American Airlines is one of those. And there's a number of reasons for that is that financially American Airlines is in a pretty decent shape. You know, they aren't necessarily as strong as Delta, for example, but they aren't as weak as a lot of other small airlines out there. And at the end of the day, they are receiving bailout from the government and I don't see them disappearing anytime soon. I bought American Airlines at 1048. As I'm recording this, it is at 1147, meaning that I've made just over a 10% gain on that position. 
And really before all of this crisis started, the stock was hovering in like the $24 to $30 range. And so I think that it is very realistic to expect that this stock is going to double in price within the next probably six to 12 months. And at the end of the day, that's really what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a quick flip. I'm not looking for something that will double my money next week. I am looking for really longer term investments, like six months to a year, while we build our economy back to where it was. Next is Cinemark. So Cinemark is the ticker symbol CNK, and I have 98 shares of Cinemark, purchased at an average price of 10.26 per share. Now Cinemark is one of the few stocks that throughout this crisis I've been buying and selling, but as of right now, I've purchased it and I probably won't sell it again until I feel like it's hit its cap. The reason why I bought Cinemark is because Movie theaters were one of the first places to shut down during the COVID crisis. It was one of the first places to really be heavily impacted by the virus and by the shelter in place orders. And I initially bought Cinemark whenever the government initially shut it down. And I bought it at $6.20 a share and then I sold it once it hit $12 a share. And then I bought back in once it hit $10 a share. So that's one that I've been kind of playing around with a bit more. But with Cinemark, I fully believe that once things go back to normal and people start returning to the theaters, that stock will go up. It, again, was hovering in the kind of $30 range and at its low, it was at $6. And so I think that with Cinemark, it can easily go three times to where it was at that point and probably two to three times to where it is right now. And it's just a matter of really waiting out these shelter in place orders and waiting out these periods of times of social distancing. Because once life returns to normal, people are going to go to the movies and people are going to return to those same sorts of things that they enjoyed doing before. I also think that Cinemark is a good investment for me because AMC hired a bankruptcy attorney meaning that AMC is actively exploring the option of filing for bankruptcy. And I don't necessarily think that AMC is going to cease to exist, but I do think that that might put Cinemark in a position to either acquire AMC or become one of the bigger movie theater providers in the country. Because if AMC ceases to exist, that just means more customers for Cinemark. So my total position in Cinemark is $1,321.04, and I have made approximately 31% on that stock since investing in it. That does not include the gains I made from buying and selling that stock over the last couple of weeks. So all in all, I would say I probably made about 50 to 60% return on this stock over the last month. My next stock is Delta, D-A-L, and I have 61 shares of Delta. Now, I have to be honest, Delta is probably my biggest regret of stocks that I've purchased over the last month with the COVID-19 crisis. The reason why I bought it was really on the same thought process as American Airlines. I think that ultimately there are going to be a lot of travel related businesses that close over the next six months to a year due to the crisis that we are experiencing. But I don't think that Delta is going to be one of those that close because I think that Delta is... I don't necessarily think that they're too big to fail, but I do think that they're too big to fail in this instance. And I think that between, you know, life turning back to normal and the government bailouts, I do think that ultimately Delta will, will return to normal. With that being said, Delta is the only stock that I am currently in the red on. And so I do regret buying that. I think that whenever I purchased Delta, there wasn't as much upside as I initially had thought. And now my investment strategy with COVID-19 is really to find stocks that could potentially do 200 to 300% ROI in the next year to year and a half. And I just really don't see that potential in Delta. So I think that with Delta, once I am in the green, I might sell and then buy into something different. But as of right now, I do have Delta. I have my 61 shares and I purchased them at an average price of $27.10. My total position with Delta is $1,480.47. And as of right now, I am down 10.4% on Delta. Now my next stock is an ETF, and this is probably my favorite investment that I've made so far in this portfolio, and it's the one that I see the biggest upside. Now, for those of you who don't know what an ETF is, it is basically an index of other stocks. And so an ETF will be like an accumulation of stocks in either a industry or a sector, and it will really reflect on how the industry is doing as a whole rather than how that individual company is doing. And so ETFs are often looked at as a safer investment in comparison to investing in, in an individual company. 
Now this ETF is a stock called Gush, that's G-U-S-H, and it is an oil and gas ETF. I have 118 shares of Gush. Now Gush is one of the few stocks that I have been continuously adding positions to. I initially started with just a $700 investment in Gush, and as I sit here today, it is my largest position with $2,970 invested in this ETF. And so far, I have made just under 13% on this position. I I chose to invest in Gush because I feel like the oil and gas industry is just a prime opportunity right now. In fact, everybody I speak to, whether it's family, friends, colleagues, business associates, they all say that oil and gas is at an all-time low and they've never seen anything like this before. And me, as a 26-year-old, should not expect to see anything like this ever again in the course of my life. And to me, that is a signal enough to show that I need to invest and put some of my money into the oil and gas industry. You know, you look around and all of us are stuck at home. We're all stuck in shelter in place. Nobody's driving. And the people that are driving are driving significantly less than they normally do. So as a result, gas is at an all time low demand, meaning that the stock prices are low as well as gas prices at your local gas pumps. But the fact of the matter is, is that at some point life is going to return to normal. And at some point airlines are going to need gas, cars are going to need gas, people are going to need to be driving to and from work again. And whenever that happens, gas prices are going to go up. And with that, demand will go up. And with that, stock prices and ETF prices will also go up. And so I feel like oil and gas is just a really great investment at this time. Now, the reason why I chose Gush specifically was because I don't know a whole lot about the oil and gas industry. Because like the travel industry, I also think that there's going to be a lot of oil and gas companies that end up filing for bankruptcy due to this economic crisis. And I don't consider myself knowledgeable enough to pinpoint which ones may file for bankruptcy versus which ones that will not file for bankruptcy. So because of that, I chose an ETF and I chose Gush because I felt like it had the highest upside compared to a lot of other other ETFs. So that is the conclusion of my TD Ameritrade account. So now let's go to my Webull account. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Webull, Webull is an app and it's spelled W-E-B-U-L-L, -L, like a bull, like an animal. And it is a really great platform for people who are new to investing. In fact, my boyfriend has never invested in his life and with the economic downturn, he felt like now was a good time to get started and he didn't wanna to have to go to a brokerage or go through the process of going through the learning curve of a platform like TD Ameritrade. So I recommended that he try Webull because I felt like, in my opinion, it was incredibly easy to learn. It's very intuitive, it's very user-friendly. I've heard a lot of people use Robinhood as well. I have never actually used Robinhood, but I did play around with it, and I felt like it wasn't nearly as easy to use as Webull. And the best part is, is that Webull has a really great referral program. Now, I did not use Webull because of this referral program. I used Webull because I felt like it was a good secondary platform to have to play around with, and I ended up using the referral program, and it worked out quite well. So how it works is that if you sign up for Webull on a referral link, then you get a couple of free stocks and I get a couple of free stocks. And then if you refer your friends to Webull, they get free stocks and you also get free stocks. So it's a really cool win-win situation and it is legitimate. You know, I got a share of General Electric and I've had now I think five or six shares of Snap Inc from referring out to people. So if you're interested in opening up a Webull account, then make sure to check out that referral link down below in the description. And if you follow that referral link and you open up an account and you deposit $100, then you'll get a free stock, I'll get a free stock, and we will both make money. So it's an awesome win-win situation. So now for my Webull account. So I'm only going to include the stocks that I've actually purchased because I do have a handful of free stocks that I've gotten through referrals, but that's not my own money, so I don't really count it. It's kind of like free money. I initially opened Webull with the intention of adding a couple hundred dollars into the account every month to the point where by the end of the year, the goal was to have between three to $5,000 in it. And my plan at the time was to use it to invest in mutual funds and ETFs. Well, then COVID-19 happened and the stock market crash happened. And so I ended up pivoting my focus to my TD Ameritrade account, which in my eyes is kind of a more, I would say, professional 
stock trading platform. And so I transitioned to TG Ameritrade where I did most of my investing, but I kept my Webull because I do like having diversification. And as my TD Ameritrade account grows, I will start putting more and more into my Webull account. So as of right now, my Webull account only has $195.78. So not a tiny amount of money. I mean, $200 is $200, but it's not $100,000 like some other people have. So like I said, my Webull account really is just to play around with. I had the money in there and I didn't really know what to do with it. And so I just put it into some good stocks that I thought could make a decent return on the investment. So my first stock is I have two shares of Cinemark CNK and I bought these two shares at $6. And as we sit here today, Cinemark is at $13.58, meaning that I have made a return of 124% on this investment. Now, the reason why I invested in Cinemark is the same reason why I invested it in, in, in my TD Ameritrade account, so I won't re-explain that one. But the second investment that I have in my Webull account is two shares of WYNN, that's W-Y-N-N. And I bought this stock at $56.23. And currently, as I sit here, it is valued at $78.98. So it has just under a 40% return. Even though this, this position is really small, my thought process with WEN is really similar to a lot of my thought processes with a lot of the other positions I have, which is that right now, Las Vegas tourism is at an all-time low, but that is inevitably going to be temporary. And I don't know if that's going to last for six months, if it's going to last for a year, if it's going to last for longer than that. But however long it lasts is almost irrelevant in my eyes. And at some point in time, life will return to normal. And so when that happens, these stocks will go up and they'll go up quite significantly. So that was my thought process with when in my Webull account. So all in all, my Webull portfolio is at 40%. So it's currently valued at about $195. So you guys, that is my entire $7,500 investment portfolio that I have right now. Like I said, I definitely consider myself kind of an un organized investor. I put my money where it makes sense at that time. And as of right now, I don't really have a long-term game plan, but I'm actively trying to figure that out. You know, I want to continue putting money into Turo until it no longer makes sense to do so. But simultaneously, I want to continue putting money into TD Ameritrade and Webull and maybe expand into other brokerages to diversify. And at some point, I also really want to get into real estate. In fact, I have a plan and a goal. By the end of 2020, I want to put myself in a position to buy a duplex in the DFW area. So I am like actively kind of creating some sort of long-term investment plan but definitely my plan with the $7,500 portfolio I just spoke about is taking advantage of the economic downturn that we are currently in. I don't plan on like flipping any of these stocks tomorrow, but I also don't necessarily see these as like 10 year stocks either. You know, my long-term plan in the stock market is to kind of do more so set it and forget it stocks. I don't consider myself like a day trader. I have no interest in trading every single day and watching charts for 12 hours a day. Like that isn't something I have any interest in doing. So my long-term plan in the market is to invest in like dividend paying stocks and index funds, mutual funds, and things like that. Things that I can invest in, really forget about them, and then in 20, 30 years reap the benefits of. But right now the investment strategy really is take advantage of the opportunity that we currently have and try to make as much money as possible. So. I will see where things lie once everything settles. I will definitely do a follow-up video on this whenever things calm down and life returns to normal. At the end of the day, between these two portfolios and the $7,500 investment, I have my own cash that I've put in is about 6,000. So I've made about 1,500 on this $7,500 investment over the course of the last month, which is something that I'm pretty happy with. You know, you can't be greedy, so it's not like, it's Lamborghini money, but it's a solid return that I am I am happy and content with, and I'm excited to see how the next few months or even few years play out with the stock portfolio. So I appreciate you guys checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.